Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here. So we're back with a brand new video. I'm going to show you guys how to get started with the Rust programming language. If you guys don't know what Rust is, it's actually a very, very popular language right now. It's actually trending in Stack Overflow, GitHub, and literally everywhere. And every single time you hear about Rust, people always usually mention two or three important things about it. Performance, safety, and concurrency. Okay, so Rust itself is actually a multi-paradigm programming language, which means it supports many different programming paradigms. And you're probably wondering what exactly are programming paradigms. Well, if you're new to programming, I'm assuming that you probably don't know so much about it, but don't worry about these things. I'm assuming that the people who are watching this video are completely brand new to programming. I want to make this as easy as possible so that way you have a wonderful learning experience. But one thing that I should mention is that Rust itself primarily focuses on performance and safety. Now, if you are a C++ developer, Rust, the syntax is actually very similar to C++. And I would say maybe even if you've developed with C or Go, you might also have a smooth transition to Rust. And um, yeah, so the question is, should you learn Rust in 2020? Well, I think it's always great to dive into, you know, different languages, assuming that, you know, you might have learned another language before and you just want to try out Rust. I don't think it's a bad thing, but if you're completely new, I don't think Rust is also a bad language to learn as a beginner. I think it's fairly easy to adapt into it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started with installing Rust. So I'm going to go and download the 64-bit because I'm on Windows 64-bit. You can go over to rust-lang.org and you can just click on install and it'll take you to this page. And obviously I'm on Windows right now, but if you're on Linux or if you're on Mac, they have other installation methods as well. You can actually use the RustUp toolchain management. So just head over to this website and there should be some instructions that show you how to install on Mac. Shouldn't be too difficult. But let's install it with the 64-bit. We're gonna click save and we're just gonna click on it. All right, so now if I open up the installation, so I'm gonna go and just type one. Okay, so it's going to install everything for us. Okay, there we go. So we have Rust installed and we can just go ahead and we can see that to get started, you need Cargo's bin directory in your path. So Rust, the installer itself will actually attempt to set up the path for you. But if you are getting path issues, such as something like Rust is not a recognized um, command, then just go over to your environment variables and make sure you configure the path to point to Cargo slash bin. All right, now the next thing that you need to make sure you have installed are the Microsoft C++ build tools. So if you already have Visual Studio on your system already, there's a chance that you already have the build tools. But if you don't, you can just actually install it through the Visual Studio installer. But you can just go over to this website over here and just download the build tools. So when you click on this, it should just save it to your desktop or wherever. So just give it a sec. Okay, so let's just save that right over here. And let's click on it. And it's just going to open up this Visual Studio installer over here. So just give it a couple of seconds. All right, cool. So now you can see right over here that we have Visual Studio installer. And we just need to install the Visual Studio build tools. And I think you need at least version uh, 2013 or greater. That's what I saw on the website. Should say it's somewhere in the documentation. But just install the latest version 2019. You can see I already have it already but you're gonna go ahead and just install it. And once you have it installed, you should be good to go. If you don't have it installed, then you're gonna get some issues with actually compiling the project. If you don't have the Visual Studio, if you don't have the C++ build tools installed, then you're gonna get some issues with compiling your Rust project, okay? So now let's go ahead and create a new project with the cargo command and you can see that we have a couple of commands that we can use such as rust c cargo and rust up so we're going to do cargo and if, we, if i just type enter you're going to see that we have a bunch of different commands we can use such as cargo build which will compile the current package check clean new and a whole bunch of things so let's do cargo new rust tutorial project okay and one thing that I should mention is, again, I'm assuming that most of you guys are very new to programming. You want to make sure you download a text editor like Visual Studio Code. I personally like Visual Studio Code. I've used it for a very long time. You can go and grab Visual Studio Code by just simply going to code.visualstudio.com. And you can just download it for whichever operating system you're on. It's cross-platform. And it's amazing to use. I love it. And yeah, because you need a text editor to actually write your code. So I just wanted to mention that for those who are completely new. So you'll know if the path is messed up, if you actually can't run any of your commands. 
But if I do cargo new, but right over here, you can see that we are, were able to create a new project successfully. So I'm just going to go ahead and do Rust tutorial project. So I'm going to seed it into this new project folder that I created with the cargo command. So CD stands for change directory. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and type code dot, which is going to open up Visual Studio Code inside this directory. But you can easily just open up Visual Studio Code and then open up the folder wherever it's located. In this, in my case, it's located in documents. So you would do file open, you would navigate to your documents folder, and you would look for the Rust tutorial project or whatever you called it and open it up. And you can see if you're new to Visual Studio Code on the left hand side, this is the project explorer. And we can click on these files over here. And what we want to do is we want to pay attention to this main.rs file. And you can see that Visual Studio Code is telling us that RLS is not installed. So we can just type yes. And we can just let it install everything that it needs to. Okay, so just give it some time. All right, so let's go back to our main.rs file. And you can see right over here, we actually have some pre-written code for us that was generated. And before we do anything else, let's actually run our code. So to do that, we can just simply do cargo build. Okay, so that's gonna compile everything. And we're gonna do cargo run. And there you go, it says, hello world, very simple. Let's go ahead and just walk through what exactly these three lines of code are, because it's very important to understand it, even though it's just three lines. So every Rust project is going to have this main function okay this function is special because this function is going to be the very first function that is going to be executed whenever we run cargo run now inside this function over here now you're probably not going to understand what a function is but don't worry for now just think of a function as some kind of subroutine that when called it's going to execute some logic some lines of code and that's what's going on over here when the main function is called this print ln exclamation mark. Okay, this is a, another function. It's basically going to, it's basically going to print out hello world to our console over here. Okay, so I don't want you to focus so much about what functions are. When we actually get to functions, it'll make sense. I want you guys to focus on just you know the, the anatomy of this you know code over here and just know that print ln is just a function that's used to printing stuff to our console that's it so i can go ahead and just do print ln exclamation mark and i can just say my name is anson and now watch this if i try to do cargo run you're going to see that it actually will automatically compile it for us so we don't have to do cargo build every single time and we can see that it says hello world my name's anson and I can go ahead and type more output if I want to. So I am 22 years old. Okay. And every single time I save, I need to make sure I save and then do cargo run. And there we go. I am 22 years old. So that's very simple. Okay. Congratulations. If you're new to programming, you've just written your first program. You've just printed stuff out to the console. Now, you can actually compile individual files yourself. So let's say if I want to create a new file, and let's just call this hello.rs. Not a good name, but when you actually build out an actual application, you want to name your files, your variables, your functions. And again, these are all going to be explained. You want to name these things something convenient that will help you understand what that file is supposed to do. So before we even proceed, let's go ahead and just simply implement the uh, main function. And let's just do a print ln. I am inside hello.rs. Okay, so now if I do Rust C, this is going to allow us to compile the hello.rs file individually. So I'm going to pass the absolute path to hello.rs. So that's dot slash source. Okay, and then hello.rs. So you can just simply type source hello.rs. So that's going to compile it for us, okay? And if I want to run this hello.rs compiled file, you can see right over here that we actually got this hello.exe file. That was the output when we compiled that file over there. So I can simply just do, whoops, hello.exe, and there you go. And that's going to log I am inside hello.rs, okay? So that's how you can simply compile just one file. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. We're going to go ahead and just move through things very slowly. I want you guys to actually understand what's going on. So congratulations, you've written your first 
Rust program. Just to recap everything, all we've done so far was we installed Rust, we installed the build tools, we created a new project with the cargo command, and we executed a couple lines of code. We printed output to the console using the println function. And again, when we actually get to the section of functions, you're going to understand what they are. But for now, I want you guys to think of print ln just think of it like this all it's responsible for is just printing to the console and that's it that's all it does don't think don't overthink it and i also showed you guys how to compile individual files and showed you guys how to execute them all right so in the next video i'm going to show you guys how to get started with variables and i'll see you guys in the next video peace